Now presenting the Penn Allen Foundation Literary Service Award to Stephen Sondheim, Meryl Streep. Thank you very much. As an actress in a room of great writers, I feel like a pilot fish on a whale. So I apologize, Stephen, in advance. In 2014, in the film version of Into the Woods, Stephen Sondheim gave me the opportunity to unleash my inner bit, my inner witch. Sorry. <laughs> but it was actually the second time that we worked together. Forty years before, in 1974, when many of you were in utero, or just an idea, I was in my first year at Yale as a student, and I was cast in the chorus of Stephen Sondheim's musical adaptation of Aristophanes' The Frogs. This production was mounted in the Yale gym, partly in and partly out of the pool. <laughs> also partly in and partly out of tune because of the acoustics, the splashing, and the chlorine up the nose. Chlorine choked by chlorine. That was my own review of my work in the frogs. <laughs> anyway. Sondheim was already a god in the theater, and I was Meryl Streep with a P, as in Peter, not T, which I said every time to the operator, but anyway. So four decades later, Disney gave us a chance, another chance, in Into the Woods, and I was very, very, very excited. I was excited and scared. <laughs> That's an inside joke, because Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Sondheim had written a song for me, uh, a new song for the film. And he invited the, um, the director, Rob Marshall, and the writer, James Lapine, and me to hear it for the first time. So we all went to his amazing home, Midtown, and he sat at the piano, surrounded by the memorabilia of his you know, storied life in the theater. And he played and sang this beautiful song, She'll Be Back, for us. And, um, it was really a moment that I will cherish my whole life. And everybody was moved. And just before we left, I had the nerve, worked up the nerve to ask him if he would, um, if I could have the sheet music and if he would, you know, sign it. So he nodded and he picked up a beautiful Mont Blanc pen and he scrawled his name in a little added salutation. So we ran out into the cab and Rob Marshall said, what did he write, what did he write, what did he write? And I unscrolled the music, and I read, Don't Fuck It Up, Steve. <laughs> That's the sort of pressure I'm feeling tonight. <laughs> Paying tribute to the master. There are not enough superlatives to do justice to Sondheim's talent, his life's work. He's already won nearly every award that exists in every category you can imagine many times over. But it is hard not to see special meaning in Stephen receiving this award this year. Because his imagination has provided the soundtrack for a half century of American life, challenging and elevating our uniquely American art form, the American musical. And when we debate whether and how to hold on to the America we know and love, we're thinking of the America that Stephen Sondheim has revealed to us, a place that's vibrant, expressive, dissonant, and dramatic, moral, immoral, yearning, despairing, fanciful, and always funny. An America that's far from ideal, but that grapples with its flaws earnestly, if imperfectly. A place that's empathetic to the vulnerable and the broken, honest. That America 
Sondheim's America is at stake as we gather tonight because the truth, the arts, the standards, the honor and freedom that Stephen Sondheim has embodied in his work and in his life are at the forefront of the struggle that Penn and all of us now engage in, trying to steady a ship of state that feels as if it's tipped pretty weirdly all to one side. So the Penn Allen Foundation Award is for literary service. It's for writers who advance causes beyond themselves. And Stephen is a devoted member of Penn America and an exemplar of everything that the organization stands for. For instance, in 1992, Stephen received a letter from the first President Bush, Bush 41, notifying him that he was going to receive the prestigious National Medal of the Arts conferred by the National Endowment for the Arts. And then, two days later, the endowment overturned two previously approved grants on its roles. Why? Because they included graphic depictions of sexual organs and images that the NEA said did not measure up to its standards nor take into account, quote, the concerns of the taxpayer and Congress. It's interesting to think about what graphic depictions of sexual organs would measure up to the uh, <laughs> NEA, the Congress, and taxpayers. <laughs> That's kind of fun. <laughs> fun to think about. <clears throat> so Stephen wrote back to President Bush, and he said, under the circumstances, quote, it would be an act of utmost hypocrisy to accept the Medal of Arts. He was hardly indifferent to the role of the NEA. He was writing fondly of his experiences working with an organization, quote, devoted to American arts and artists and noble in intent and clear of purpose. But he wrote, it had become a victim of its own and others' political infighting, and it was being transformed into a conduit and a symbol of censorship and repression. Stephen Sondheim has described art as an attempt to bring order out of chaos. He has used his art to order the chaos of our moment in time. He's refused to allow his art to be enlisted in the service of suppression of others. He's stood up for creative freedom and thereby for all of us. Pan America's mission is to use art as an antidote to chaos mobilizing writers and artists to defend the liberties that are at the beating heart of a civilized and open society. So for these reasons, it's my great honor to present the lion-hearted Stephen Sondheim with Pen America's American Pen Allen Foundation Literary Service Award. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You thought that was an actress? That's a writer. When I first heard that I was to receive this award, I was not only honored but startled. I write songs for musicals, for God's sake. Musicals, the runt of the arts. Not poems, not novels, not essays, not works of history, songs. But then I thought, if institutions of higher learning now not only offer courses in the subject, but have entire departments devoted to musical theater, if you can sign up for Cole Porter 101, 102, if Bob Dylan can win the Nobel Prize, <laughs> maybe it's okay to take musicals seriously but not too seriously. <laughs> but then I thought, according to the guidelines, the Penn Allen Award is supposed to go to, quote, 
an author whose work embodies Pan America's mission to oppose repression in any form and to champion the best of humanity. Close quote. Well, I've made a few passive political gestures, like turning down a medal, or like writing the score for a show about American guns, America's gunboat diplomacy in the 19th century. But unlike some of this award's recipients, I can't say that a little night music or follies has helped to oppose repression or champion humanity. <laughs> but then I thought, there are other repressions besides political ones. There's the repression of imagination fostered by parents who don't understand or teachers who aren't interested. And that's why I and some other writers of the Drama Guild started the Young Playwrights Festival over 30 years ago. It's a competition open to writers 18 years and younger from every state in the country. And their winning plays get professional productions off Broadway. And that's where Penn comes in. An organization which defends freedom of thought and expression Young people here need that freedom just as much as oppressed writers in other countries, only in a different way. So maybe this award isn't quite as startling as I thought. If I can share it with my cohorts over the years at Young Playwrights. I'm also glad you like my songs. Thank you. <laughs>